So, Jordan, can you tell us what you've been focusing all that energy on for the last nine months or so? For the last nine months? Um, so, the main things that I've been working on really are building the social business iKinetic. Uh, the technologies that we're looking at are inclusive technologies, how we can harness the main technologies that are coming out, all the advancements that we can see coming out uh, in the space, and how we can harness those for empowerment in disability. Uh, so that's very much been the psychonetic social business side of things. Um, also, uh, documentaries. So we did our first documentary with the ABC last year uh, called Becoming Superhuman, and I know Riley's in the crowd, our little superhuman over there, all the way over there. Go and say hi later on. Um, Riley uh, got to, to go on this you know, amazing adventure with us. It was just a huge adventure where we got to... Um, uh, see how the technology could be built with Riley, with our psychonetic team, with all these other people involved to, uh, to get Riley communicating uh, with the TV, with the lights, being able to control those things with the electrical activity of his eyes. Uh, we developed the technology on screen and, uh, and then went on this adventure with him to achieve his, his dream of driving a vehicle <laughs> um, purely with the electrical activity of his eyes. Uh, awesome, awesome guy, go and say hi. Um, and yeah, and so really it's been between the technologies that we're applying in the disability space, but also understanding where technology is taking us, the intersection between humanity and technology so we can understand it better. Um, and the latest documentary I'm working on uh, is with Discovery Channel uh, to work out what's happening in China. The, the entrepreneurship in technology of China, a lot of things are changing over there. One of the coolest things I've seen is that Australia is up there. We've closed the gap between our technology uptake, where, where all the technologies come out in the world, and in Asia, in the US, we harness these things really quickly, and that's awesome. So uh, there's a lot that we can do with it. So you're talking about building a social business. Yes. Can you tell us more about what you mean there? Social businesses are great. I think they're a new thing that really most businesses should, especially those that are starting out, should move towards this social business, social enterprise space. It's very much in between uh, not-for-profits, uh, charities, and the for-profit space. What you are doing, instead of, um, instead of maximising profits, you're maximising social impact. So when you create a social business, you have to create a viable business model. You need to, if you're creating products like we are, um, they need to be products that people actually want uh, and people will actually purchase, bring into their own life. You need to have that viable business model, um, but it's all about maximizing social impact. So tell us about the to and fro and how you communicate with you know, with the people you're serving with that business. Well, we, I, I just see it as, my team and I just get to work with a bunch of our friends and create fun stuff. We, uh, we sit with individuals, we, we uh, work through what their, their main abilities are, what the dreams are, what the things uh, they want to achieve are, and, uh, and then we try and figure out how we're going to make it happen. So one of the coolest things about innovation is that you, you build the teams, you bring diverse people together, diverse perspectives together, you throw yourself into a project, and most of the time we start a project before we have any idea how we're going to make it happen. Uh, so we, we're resourceful like that. And yeah, and so we worked with Riley on making all of that happen in Becoming Superhuman, which is uh, an ABC documentary. Uh, we've been working with Jess Owen, who you'll hear from very soon, uh, to get her playing music with her eyes. And really it's about how we can harness these amazing advancements in technology and use them to empower the individuals around us. What we want to do is move towards creating a society that we all want to see. We want to work towards creating a better world. And in all of my travels, everywhere I go, this is the coolest thing. This is what I find. I find so many great people who want to see positive change in the world. So we need to start taking action on that because, you know, good intentions, a lot of the time they sit dormant. Um, one thing that has been sad to see, but I have noticed, is that good intentions don't incite as much action as fear and hate and anger. So this is where we have to start taking action on those good feelings, on those ideas of a positive society. I like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> so when you talk about virtual reality and yeah. augmented reality and the application of those in our daily lives, as well as inclusive technology, where do you see it going? Look, it's going in so many different areas, which is, <laughs> which is exciting. It's, it's exciting and with every single technology advancement there is, there's always massive challenges and massive opportunities. So 
virtual reality is definitely going to take us into these spaces. We're going to find we're losing people to the virtual world, just like I lost friends to World of Warcraft. Nothing against it, just <laughs> sometimes you don't see them for a year. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> what happens is, with virtual reality, I mean, it's just so immersive where it's getting now. There's been a lot of investment, a lot of, uh, a lot of work being done in virtual reality hardware. Now the software is starting to turn up. We're going to see entire businesses going into the virtual world. This is absolutely possible. The technology's here. We've seen some of the applications of it. Uh, some of the work we're doing with Humans can achieve this. Um, Humans, you saw in the, the video. And this is like the idea of creating a virtual avatar. It's a little bit controversial, but you know, so is everything else that we adopt into our lives and suddenly we're, uh, we're very used to waking up and having this very powerful device in our pocket every day. Um, we just get used to adopting the technology. It's always strange when it's still unknown, when it's still yet to come out. And then as soon as it's been brought into our lives, we're very good at accepting and adopting it and then thinking the next thing is going to destroy the world. So, so this is how we have to look for the opportunities in it. Um, like I was saying, businesses will completely move into the virtual world. We'll find that uh, some people will decide to stay at home, put on a headset, have their avatar turn up to a space, uh, have the meeting space where you've got all your avatars around the room. I mean, why do you go to work? You don't go to work for your little cubicle. Uh, you go to work for meeting the people and having those face-to-face -face interactions. It doesn't replace human interaction and we're not arguing that. But there are many opportunities that can be brought up from that. Virtual reality, as we heard from uh, John Go before, who was amazing, I, uh, I grew up in Maryland as well. I went to Parramatta West Primary School. Um, represent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Uh, that was awesome, and seeing what happens in virtual reality, the thing is students are multimodal. The way that we learn, we learn so much different, we learn so much more effectively if we're interacting with the content. So if we're interacting with the content and you're talking about what students are learning, if they're creating their own virtual reality devices, if they're um, their own uh, interactions, I've seen a lot of this. So very quickly, we've heard of virtual reality, augmented reality. Uh, is, is everyone across what these are? And, okay, I'm seeing a few people going, no. Um, so what happens is, in virtual reality, we completely go into the virtual world. You put on a headset, you put on, you can wear other devices as well, so you can feel uh, virtual objects that you're picking up and moving around. There's lots of different things coming out that trick the senses into believing that you're in a virtual world. Uh, it's, a, it's a neurological trick, but there's a lot of great uh, applications of this that we'll go into another time. Uh, so what happens is, in virtual reality, you go into the virtual world. You forget where you are in the real world, you go into the virtual world. Um, in augmented reality, we take uh, digital assets, we take virtual objects and bring them into the real world. So that's the idea of having holograms. Uh, it's not, not far off us all having glasses, uh, me creating a hologram here and we can all see it. So you can interact with these digital objects. Uh, product development is going to completely change. Product development, you'll be able to create a product, create a new car, see it, move through it, feel it, um, iterate, create new versions of it instead of creating big plastic models with 3D printing, which was, did a lot for rapid prototyping. So product development will change, education will change, every sector we can think of will change in some way. And so we're looking at how the eye-controlled devices that we're working on now to be able to allow people to communicate through their eyes. Text-to-speech devices, we've got Riley helping us with this. He's helping us design and test um, a fast speech device that he can speak with his eyes. Uh, we've got Jess playing music with her eyes. She's our rock star. And we're looking at how those technologies and virtual reality technologies will come together. Because one of the next basic transitions, the, the next natural uh, evolutions of virtual reality is to have eye tracking inside it. So that if you're playing a game, just say, you're playing a game and there's a character in the game in your virtual reality um, world, the character knows that you're looking at them. Then that also helps in marketing and lots of other boring things. I mean, it's like you can put it into really whatever you want, but there are very cool applications for it. The eye tracking technology is very powerful, and when you put it into virtual reality, we end up having a system that stays with you wherever you're looking. And so we can see a lot of benefit in it. Wow. So given this, <laughs> what are you most excited about for the tech future? What am I most excited about? Um, I think that... Really, there's a lot of, there's, there is a lot of fear of the change, and this sometimes drives what we do. Really, the idea here is that we are currently sitting at the fastest rate of change the world has ever seen. 
right? But we're also sitting at the slowest rate of change we may ever see again. So if we fear this change, that's going to drive many terrible decisions. What we need to do is to look at the opportunities, look at where we can create a better society, where we can harness these technologies, and we can harness them as tools. They're tools to create our visions. So we see how it can be used in the disability space. It can be used in so many different, uh, so many different locations, so many different applications, and what we need to do is to raise these conversations. We need to talk about what different technologies there are out there, what's happening, how they could be used, where are the challenges, where are the potential opportunities, and start to figure those out and take action on it. So what I'm excited about is that because of the rapid rate of change in the world at the moment, we as individuals, we as groups, we as companies, we can make a difference more than ever before. We can make a difference because the world is changing so quickly, we can harness those changes and steer them in the direction that we want to, want to go in. We can create a better world. And that's what I want to see. Sounds good to me. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Jordan Newell. Thank you very much. <laughs>